All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I think with the exception of our uh, friends and colleagues in Hawaii, good morning to you. And welcome to our January All Members Meeting. This is Una Daly from the... You may want to mute yourself if um, you're in a lazy background area, just so that we don't get um, feedback on our recording. And we will record this for those who couldn't join us uh, live today. Let me just start our slides here. All right, here is our most recent map of our members. Um, and we are really filling in those middle states. Uh, we are just really excited about that. Uh, that is really becoming um, a commonplace event for uh, community colleges to be involved in open education. All right, and welcome to everybody today. Um, here is our agenda. Um, we are going to welcome our brand new members. Those are the ones who joined us in December and January in just a moment. Um, and um, we are going to ask all of you to share a little update um, about what's happening with your project. Um, and we're gonna, this is something we haven't done before, so this is kind of an experiment. Uh, Quill is going to put in um, a link to a Google, Google Doc where um, we're inviting you to share uh, your name, your college, um, or, or system. And um, a real quick update um, about what's happening, and then a one-word uh, expression of um, what open education means to you. I, I, believe, I believe that was our, uh, we, we planned this with our executive council, who I will tell you about in just a moment as well. So yeah, please go ahead and, uh, and uh, fill out that, and we'll talk about that as we progress on in the webinar. Um, then we have some OEC news uh, for you um, to talk about what's happening with our parent organization. And in fact, we have our communications director here uh, from OEC, Susan Huggins, who'll be, who'll be sharing some things with us. Then we'll go into some of our executive council updates, uh, what's happening with uh, the folks who help run CCCOER. Uh, and then we're going to give you an overview of webinars, blogs, and spring and fall conferences. So um, I wanted to ask if there's any questions before I move forward. And let me, and Quill is monitoring the chat window for me. I am not the greatest parallel processor. Okay, so I think um, many of you know our amazing um, executive council. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Starting with Quill West there, who's our president on the far left, Cynthia Alexander, Kiri Dolly, Regina Gong, Matthew Bloom, uh, Michael Mills, and Nikki Stubbs. And I know uh, most of them are here today. I know Mike and Cynthia, I think, are out. And then, of course, I hope uh, many of you know my um, amazing support specialist, Liz Yada, who helps us with um, all sorts of things. Um, at CCCOER around programming, the website, running the webinars, et cetera. And we just really couldn't do this work without her. All right. Um, here are some of our advisors that continue on. They're no longer on the executive council. I know that two of them are out today giving um, OER talks at local colleges in their area. Uh, so couldn't be with us. And Lisa and Preston um, are, uh, were longtime council members who have stepped off to do other things, but we continue to, to work with them. All right. Um, I hope that... Um, this, I hope that uh, our, our brand new members um, are here today and, and, would, and if they'd like to say a few things, I want to just clarify that these are our new members from fall of 2018. So this is from September through um, actually January. <laughs> so uh, we had a member just join us last week and we're thrilled to have her. Um, because um, the, the other uh, seven people introduced themselves at the new member mixer and we have a lot of content today. I can't let all 10 of them introduce themselves, but I would like to invite uh, Brittany and Barry and Cheryl Lee 
to say a few words if they if they would and if they have a microphone. Um, and I don't think I warned them about this, so uh, this is <laughs> this is an invitation. And I'll start with Brittany. Brittany, do you have a microphone? And would you like to say a little bit about your work at the Colorado Community College System? Sure. Um, is my microphone working? I did not test it. Yes, it sounds perfect. Um, hi everyone, my name is Brittany Dudek. I am the Library Coordinator at Colorado Community Colleges Online, which is um, one of the departments at the Colorado Community College System Office. Um, the Colorado Community College System is 13 colleges in the state of Colorado, um, so if you wanted you could add 13 more dots to the map. Um, I currently chair the OER Council at um, Colorado Community Colleges Online, and I am the Vice Chair of the Colorado Department of Higher Ed's Open Educational Resource Council, um, and that's our statewide council. Um, at CCC Online, we've been doing OER since 2007, um, and we've got a couple of exciting announcements coming up soon. Um, We've got varying levels of OER going on at the different colleges. Um, and I'm happy to say that many of the community colleges throughout the state um, have applied for the different grants that um, we're excited to offer through CDHE this year. Um, we'll be able to announce those grant uh, awardees um, after the commission's meeting on the 7th of February. Wonderful. Thanks. Thanks so mm -hmm. much, Brittany. And you know, we've been working with Front Range College. Mm -hmm. um, and um, they've been a member now for well over a year, and mm -hmm. we've also been consulting with Arapaho College. Yes, College. yeah, we're excited now that we get to, um, we were able to join finally on behalf of the system so we can kind of offer the membership to all of the colleges. Um, we're a little bit siloed and we're working on kind of breaking down those silos from the system office to the different colleges. Well, wonderful, welcome. We're really Thank excited you. to have Colorado all in. Yes. So we are, that's great. All right, next up is um, Barry Bailey, who is the Digital Projects Librarian, Librarian. Johnson, County. Johnson County Community College. Community College. Well, I can't, I can't talk to you now because my webinar started six minutes ago. <laughs> okay, Barry, um, do you have a microphone? I do, in fact, have a microphone. Yeah, please, please uh, introduce yourself. All right, hi, I'm Barry Bailey. I'm a professor at Johnson County Community College, where I've been for 10 years. Uh, Johnson County Community College is in Overland Park, Kansas. It's a suburb of Kansas City. And I'm coming to you live from a snow day, uh, as we were iced over last night. Um, we, I think about five or six years ago, had a strong administrative push where everyone was trying to claim ownership of OER. And, uh, by that struggle happening, it sort of never took off. So in the last two years, we've actually focused on making a concerted effort. I'm head of the OER task force at our college, which contains faculty members, three librarians, um, educational technology support, uh, and we're trying to work on our relationship with our bookstore, uh, which is in-house. So um, I worked on a grant that unfortunately didn't get picked up with uh, CCC OER members. Um, I appreciated it and we decided to self-fund some mini grants moving forward just to sort of get the ball rolling. We've got strong interest from some high enrollment courses, which is exciting. And um, we uh, joined, uh, checks in the mail. So <laughs> uh, thanks. Well, wonderful, Barry. And we're looking forward to working with you more on um, your project going forward this spring with the faculty. All right, um, and next up is, uh, I hope, Shirley has joined us today from Santa Ana College. Let me see, uh, looks like Shirley didn't make it. Um, Santa, so let me just give a very quick overview. Uh, Santa Ana College has been working on OER since about 2011, um, doing amazing work. They um, are a member of the OER degree grant from Achieving the Dream. Um, they are also um, a member of the California ZTZ degree grant. So they've been, they're doing three full pathways and right at the moment I can't tell you exactly which they are, but they're um, some really interesting ones, a business administration one, one in biotechnology, I think a physics degree. Um, they're doing all of that for the California ZTZ. So long time OER, um, college um, doing amazing thing for their students. And I'm sorry Shirley isn't here to tell you because she could give you the details. And um, she's, been, she's been involved in the leader of this uh, since they started. All right. Um, 
And once again, welcome again to Achieving the Dream, Grayson College in Texas, Central Lakes College in um, Minnesota, Roxbury College in Massachusetts, Trident Technical College in uh, South Carolina, Fox Valley Technical in Wisconsin, and Windward Community College, uh, which is part of the University of Hawaii system. Uh, we're so thrilled to have you all join us. And now I want to turn this over to uh, Susan Huggins, the Communications Director at OEC, to tell you about a very exciting um, conference that uh, our parent organization, the Open Ed Consortium, puts on every year. And this year is no exception. Susan? Hi, Una. Thank you. And glad to be here, everyone. Um, I just wanted to share some information with you about OE Global. It is our annual conference. It is held uh, various places throughout the world. Uh, this year, it will be held in Milan, Italy. Our host, Politecnico de Milano, uh, has been so gracious uh, to host the conference this next year in uh, November 26 through 28. The theme is open education for an open future. So we hope to emphasize um, the accessibility, the quality approach and opportunities for others in open education and what it does for each of us. Um, just wanted to share the, the new website. You are actually the first group to see the new website. We're actually not uh, announcing it till in the morning. Um, so you guys are the first to log on and take a look. Uh, be sure to scroll around, check out the venue, check out our host, and uh, follow us on Twitter and Facebook, uh, and also our newsletter for upcoming important announcements about Call for Proposals and how you can join us in Milan. Wonderful. Thank you, Susan. And um, I'm typing in the um, website here. Oh, thank you, Quill. Um, the pictures of... Um, the location in Milan are just stunning. So, um, I it will be it will be very exciting. Um, it's it kind of surprised me. I pictured Milan, our our host anyway, of being you know very historical and you know these older buildings. But in fact, um, Politecnico is actually one of the the largest in Italy when it comes to technology. And the campus is extremely modern, um, so it's a it's a great contrast of you know um, the the modern you know buildings and things that are um, unlike the downtown that we think of. But anyway, log on, check it out. We look forward to seeing some of you there. Thank you again, Susan. And I just want to say because this is a very technology driven university, uh, those of you who uh, maybe can make the case from a career technical education perspective. <laughs> I, I know sometimes it can be quite challenging to get funding for international travel at the community colleges. Um, that is a fact of life. It, but sometimes when you can make that connection with your program um, and with the polytechnic um, uh, connection, that might be a, a different way this year to approach it. So we really hope that uh, that you can join us um, for some of that or <laughs> there, there will be some of it will be uh, live streamed right Susan we usually do the keynotes live streamed as well absolutely uh, in fact we're working uh, almost a year ahead of time to try to live stream as much as possible um, the technology is there and so we are you know working with our host uh, to try to ensure that some of the other sessions are live streamed as well um, we have some pretty different things that are going to be planned for next year. So we're excited to uh, kind of think outside the box. So come join us. Great, great. And Susan will keep us updated as the plans continue because we're still um, a little over six months out. So yeah, actually we're eight or nine months out. So. <laughs> I was going to say it's quite yeah, a while, yeah, but yes. Quite a while. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Thanks again. All right, uh, Liz, uh, our support specialist, uh, wants to tell you about the invoices that will be appearing in your inbox shortly. All right, so um, there's been a bit of delay. We're, we're, we're in the process of, of uh, updating the way invoices go out, so hopefully it'll be smoother this year. So um, either 
earlier or mid-February, the invoices should go out. Um, it'll be sent to the accounting contact, or if you don't have an accounting contact, it'll be to the main contact. If you want to check or update your contacts, um, you can update the them in the members portal, which you, you go to the OE consortium. Um, org page and there's a green uh, button in the top right that says members portal or you can uh, reach out to me and I can look at it for you and support us um, you'll be part of a global movement and you'll help support projects like our webinar the OE consortium puts on and we also have um, members only activities and we provide additional support for our members. Thank you, Liz. Yeah. Um, so thank you all for your membership and we, re we really appreciate your support uh, to make this happen. All right, Quill. Hi again, everybody. Um, so <laughs> I get the honor. We're we're kind of covering open education consortium things up front. So um, I get to chat with you about the Open Education Consortium Board. So Open Education Consortium is our um, I think we say parent organization, but they are um, they're the organization that kind of sets our international agenda. They are. Um, really, really important in kind of our lives in terms of setting and supporting what we're going to do um, in CCC OER. So um, the OEC board is made up of a group of people that are elected from across, it's an international group of leaders in open education. They, um, they do a lot of work in terms of setting the agenda for all of OEC. Um, they do a lot of work in terms of supporting the conference, uh, and they're a really, really important central group for us to know about. So currently they're accepting nominations for people who would like to run for the board. There's five positions open on the board this year, um, and we currently have no one on the OEC board, a vote, no voting members on the OEC board, who are from community colleges. Um, OEC is a is an international organization. Most of the members who are not joining as part of CCCOER are four year institutions that are very very traditional um, in terms of their setups. So um, we think it's really important that the community technical college perspective be on the board because we want to push our agenda. Um, let me rephrase that because that's not the right way I wanted to say that. We want our voices to be heard in terms of understanding the unique perspectives of serving students in community colleges. Um, so if you are interested at all in having um, participating in a really eclectic group of interesting people who care passionately about open education and care a lot about um, finding ways to message open education across the world um, in variety of spaces, please think about running for the OEC board. Um, we are um, Una and I are working with folks to try to find a connection um, and figure out how CCCOER can support you in your run for the board. Um, there's more information and job descriptions at that link that's on the screen and I will paste it to the chat window as soon as I'm done chatting if somebody else doesn't do it first. Um, <laughs> um, the nominations, as you can see, are due February 13th and the big catch, and it's a big one for community colleges is that the board meets twice annually in person. So the really cool thing is, is if you love to travel, they usually meet someplace very cool. Um, I do believe their next meeting is going to be, are they meeting in, um, Una, where are they meeting? Remind me. <laughs> uh, I don't, I haven't, uh, um, yeah, the April meeting, um, I don't think it's been um, announced yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it was supposed to be at OER 19, but I think okay. they have decided to move it. Um, and not sure where. 
Okay, but in one of their meetings is always attached to the OEC Global Conference. So um, they'll meet in Milan um, and, and it is just, they're a very, very fun group. Every time I go be around them, they do something really fun as part of their meeting. So I would encourage you to think about it. Um, and if you have any questions about it, please get in touch with Una or me um, and check out the, the OE Consortium website for information about the elections and membership and what the job looks like. Okay. So another plea for leadership from Quill. <laughs> so OEC has a board. Um, CCCOER has an executive council and our executive council kind of helps keep this machine running. Uh, the executive council works with Una and one another to do things like arrange webinars, um, to try to find partnerships for ourselves, to set the agenda in terms of trying to figure out um, what will best support CCCOER members in a variety of spaces. And we are looking for leaders who are willing to join us in the upcoming year. So um, if you look at that list there for example i've been for i've been cccor exec council president for um two terms so we're looking for a new president um we need a vice president in charge of partnerships and protocol and that job is it's an interesting one but it's really about um finding partners ways for us to partner with other organizations to further um, our mission and protocol is really about establishing and understanding our bylaws so that we we match our rules. Um, professional development um, are the folks who help set up all of our webinars. They decide what the webinars are going to be about. They recruit people for the webinars um, and they are incredible. Um, we're also looking for a vice president where we have positions of vice president for website and blog for um, to help maintain our website and run our blog for the past few years, Curie has been doing for that for us and she's amazing. Um, we're looking for somebody, this is a new position to help um, with membership and support new members and people applying for membership to CCCOER. Um, and then we're always looking for people willing to take on special projects. Uh, so we're going to send out a Google form in the exec, uh, in the membership email list um, and if you are all interested in joining our group of people we're pretty great uh, i think this is one of the most fun professional organizations i've ever been a part of and so i hope that you would want to join us uh, we're gonna do that google form and then for all the people that sign up we'll do a meeting in march or april to talk about like what is the expectation who's interested what do we have in terms of our leadership for next year okay thanks una Actually, any questions about that? Okay, I counted to 10. One more piece of information, and this one every one of you can help us with, and it's really, really super helpful for us. We sent out an annual member survey. It's a really informal survey that comes once a year, usually in April or early May. Um, and it helps us, and we ask all of the members to take it, all of the CCCOER members to take the survey. It helps us set our agenda for next year. Um, it gives us a sense of what everybody's working on and what's important to you. And it helps us engage in outreach to all of our community members. Um, so we will talk about some of those survey results in this meeting, but we also just wanted to make sure that you know that it's coming and look for it. Um, oh, Brittany, that is a great question. So I'm gonna go back, we're answering a question about the last thing. Yeah, if you're joining as part, if, if your community joined as part of a consortium, like a statewide consortium, um, yeah, we kind of take all volunteers who want to be active and participate um, in, the, in the council leadership. So yes, if you have, if you're like, you know, my college didn't join directly, but I want to participate and we're a statewide membership, definitely let us know that you're interested in participating because yes, you can volunteer. 
we take all volunteers in all forms. <laughs> I would agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> when I became president, actually, I was a member of a state, um, state membership. My individual college hadn't joined yet, so we joined after I became president. And actually, I changed colleges in the middle, and then my college joined. <laughs> okay. All right. I believe I get to mute myself now, right? Uh, I think so. Um, and I can't remember. Matthew, were you going to do this slide? Or I, maybe I'll do this slide, and then I'll turn it over to you, Matthew. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> Are you there, Matthew? I am here. Yeah, I, I wasn't going to do this slide. I think I could if you needed me to. No, I, I'm happy to do it. Um, this is just <laughs> a really quick summary of fall 2018. Um, I, um, just to let you know what uh, went on um, in the fall of 2018, if you weren't participating. Sometimes it's fun to see numbers. So we had six different webinars um, offered. Um, five of those were to the broader community. Um, and then I'm sorry, four were to the broader community, um, two were for our members. Um, all of that um, information, um, uh, we keep archives of all of these. And for, of course, on our homepage, we have a webinar button and you can go back and look at the archives for all of those. Um, if it's a member only meeting, like our September meeting and the one that was um, our new member mixer that we had in December, those we keep in a separate page called member activities. Uh, they're not on the main page, um, but please do check those out. We had a lot of participation in that. Um, um, and I just wanted to mention that uh, we worked with uh, both the California Zero Textbook Cost Degree Program this year and also with ATD's OER Degree Program. So uh, two amazing programs to work with. Uh, we've been helping them develop their programs. Um, we had five guest blog posts um, and Kiri Dolly will tell you a little bit more about that later on. And um, uh, for those of you who were able to attend the Open Ed Conference in Niagara Falls, we had a really fun event. Um, we had a reception in the afternoon uh, with the entire OEC. So we had, uh, we had literally uh, people from six continents in a room in Niagara Falls at that uh, Open Ed Conference, which was really fun. And then afterwards, there was an opportunity to join a dine around town activity um, at three different restaurants. And about, I think about 45 people participated in that part of it. So really fun. We try to do those meetups um, whenever we can at, at, the, at the big conferences. All right. Turning this over now to uh, Matthew to talk a little bit about uh, the new member uh, mixer we had, um, where Matthew was one of our main facilitators, and then also about the toolkit. And I thought Nikki might, might, might want to mention what the toolkit uh, was about. Matthew? Uh, yeah, well, I, um, yeah, we had a me new member mixer in um, December, and we had the opportunity to uh, discuss some, you know, things that different people were doing with regards to open education um, at their colleges. We do have uh, the toolkit. Nikki, are you there? I didn't really work on the toolkit. I was going to talk about the, um, about the open education week stuff so i'm not really prepared to talk about this slide <laughs> <laughs> no worries and i'm not sure if nikki's there i don't don't hear her um so nikki uh uh, uh Kiri I'm, Dolly. i'm here oh okay I, I thought you might want to mention the purpose behind the new member toolkit which you worked on um this summer and fall with us yeah Sure. So, uh, so the new member toolkit, we really put together um, as a guide for new members. Um, I joined the Executive Leader Council um, not too long um, before we started working on this. Um, and for me as a new member last year, um, I, I felt like, you know, it's, it can be a little um, overwhelming when you join an organization like this for the first time, especially um, for those um, institutional organizations who are joining um, when, you know, you may be managing multiple colleges and, and um, initiatives um, at the same time and you kind of want a little guidance on where to go. Um, so the new member toolkit is really for new members to just, again, just give you some guidance on 
um, some specific things within um, within um, CCC OER that we're working on um, and some guidance for the website and the webinars and what to expect. And I do want to encourage you, um, if you did recently join and you didn't make it to the December new member mixer, um, the new member mixer for me when I was a new member was one of the best webinars um, to kind of kick everything off as a new member uh, simply because it's a place for you to share and feel like you can kind of ask questions in a, a little bit more of an informal setting. Um, so I, I do want to encourage everybody who's new uh, and, and a new member recently to, to come to those new member mixers. They're, they're a lot of fun. Yeah, and, and I can, and this is Matthew again, I can actually add to that. Um, I apologize, you know, it's like anything that happened more than a month ago, I can't remember any details at all. So, um, you now going back, I'm noticing, yeah, I remember we had um, a, like a pretty good section of the new member mixer in December was dedicated to uh, Q&A, basically. And so there was a lot of informational stuff, but then we also really did try to get people to uh, interact and ask questions. And so I, I just want to support what you just said about um, it, an opportunity for new members to, you know, meet each other and then also to kind of um, ask questions and participate um, in a way that's not too intimidating, or at least we hope so. We had so much to talk about that we only got through four of the, you know, like 10 questions that we had uh, planned. Yeah, th thank you both for that uh, <laughs> that summary. Yeah, um, with you know ten new members coming on in the fall, we're trying um, harder to bring you on board through a toolkit, which not only exactly what Nikki told you, um, finding out about how you can participate, but it also gives you ways that you can move your participation up. Um, in, in the organization too, if you want to be on the executive council, if you want to contribute to webinars or blogs. Um, all of those things. So thanks so much. Um, and oh, and thank you to Kiri for putting the, um, the toolkit um, link in there. So if you aren't a brand new member, you might have missed that email. Um, but every new member gets this link as part of their welcome message. All right. Matthew's going to tell you a little bit about what we're doing for Open Education Week. And um, do you want to talk about the global celebration, Matthew, or would you like me to introduce that? Um, you can introduce it if you want. I don't, might be able to add to it, but. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I could or I could certainly ask Susan to as well. So I think many of you have participated in Open Education Week um, over the years. I think we're going into our seventh or eighth year now of Open Education Week. And each year we do a summary of what community colleges do. I should say Liz does. And um, so if you need ideas, We've got some links for you, but essentially this is a global celebration of open education worldwide. Um, it's an opportunity for you to run activities on your campus or online if you choose, uh, put them into the schedule um, so that you get some exposure uh, from a worldwide audience um, and also invite folks at your campus to participate in the online events that are going on. Um, they could participate in a webinar uh, that was from another country. Um, might be easier if it's in English, but you know, for some of, your, some of the people at your campus, they may uh, be fluent in other languages. So there's some, an amazing number of webinars, usually something around 50 or 60 that week um, that you can participate in. So there's, there's many each day. Um, and so it's, it's a wonderful opportunity to find out what's going on around the world, but also to bring it home to your campus. And Matthew, why don't you tell us what CCCOER is doing? Yeah, so um, in addition to that, I mean, we are also planning on offering a series of um, faculty-focused dialogue kind of webinars, in a sense, um, slightly informal. We are looking for um, faculty members, um, you know, in specific disciplines. So one discipline each day, for example, I, I think what we're planning is uh, business, math, history, psychology, and science. So each day we'll have a couple of faculty members in that same discipline um, participate and uh, we'll give them some guiding questions ahead of time so that they uh, have an opportunity to kind of 
you know, plan what they're going to say or how they're going to discuss. But the idea is, is to just have them share the intricacies, intricacies of teaching OER in that specific discipline, some of the lessons that they've learned or the experiences that they've had. Um, maybe what, what is uh, unique about, you know, dealing with OER in that discipline. I think the idea also is to try to get a, at least a couple of those um, 30 to 45 minute uh, faculty dialogue webinars to involve discussions about open pedagogy. So um, it should be interesting. I mean, as Una said, there's a lot of opportunities for webinars that week. And so we didn't want to necessarily, um, you know, throw a five more hour long webinars at everyone, but we certainly wanted to open up those dialogues. And um, we think it might be interesting because uh, at least in my perspective, you know, I teach English and sometimes I, uh, I, you know, only am looking for maybe stuff that I'm going to use in English or I talk with other English instructors, but um, it's, it's sometimes very interesting, I think, to hear about what instructors in other disciplines are experiencing and how, um, you know, and what those different perspectives might bring to you. So that's what we'll be doing. There's a link you can see right there if you'd like to sign up. Um, and Una, just to be clear, I believe that that link is, we're actually seeking people to participate it to actually be participants like the faculty speakers, correct? That is correct. Yeah, so that that form will um, ask for the name, contact information, the discipline, um, and also what day of the week since we're going to do these um, 30 to 45 minute webinars um, each day during uh, sort of last few of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday um, that you'd like to participate. And if we get more than we can fit, we probably will have to do some selection, um, probably based on popularity, unfortunately, but, uh, you know, just because, but we will certainly consider folks for another event if we can't fit everyone into this one. Um, Thank you, uh, Matthew, for sharing that. And, and don't forget that any event that you're planning um, that you want to share, and, and we do encourage you to share because this is part of making this a global movement, is do submit it to uh, the openeducationweek.org site, uh, which, is <coughs> which is sponsored by, the, by, by us, the Open Education Consortium. Uh, and Paige, you asked about the disciplines, um, and we have not decided in advance what the disciplines are. So we want to see what people submit, um, and we definitely will do some of those popular ones, but we want to see if there's interest in some other disciplines, maybe that are slightly outside the mainstream. So thanks for asking that question. And so, Paige, you could either send this to faculty or you could consult with them yourself and then submit their name for them. It's, it's up to you how you want to handle it. All right. Anything else there, Matthew? No, just general promotion of Open Education Week. We found, in my experience at, at our institution, I found it a great uh, opportunity to celebrate, not just to um, promote open education, since we try to do that on a regular basis and not just once a year, but uh, to really kind of celebrate it and, um, and celebrate faculty achievements for, related to it as well. Uh, we did a thank you campaign last, uh, last couple of years at Scottsdale Community College that was pretty inspiring for some faculty to um, have, you know, student feedback uh, you know, directed to them saying thank you for you know t taking my financial stability in mind uh, you know keeping it in mind while you choose your resources so um, just a general promotion there nice nice yeah nice idea to thank faculty during that week who've adopted oer all right regina are you there regina uh is uh uh, Co-professional development VP with Matthew, and I think you were going to introduce our webinars for the spring. Is that me again? Let's see. Yep. Looks like we might. Uh, Regina is a very busy lady these days. Looks like we uh, missed That's her. Okay. So go go right ahead, Matthew. Sure. Uh, yeah. So as you can see on here, um, we have a number of webinars lined up. Um, I believe we have uh, some of the speakers lined up already too, but um, you, 
we, as you can see here, the first one is going to be faculty and college OER adoption stories. That's going to be here uh, just next week. Uh, we have, I believe we have someone from, I just, we just got that um, announced yesterday. One of them is actually from Phoenix College, which is in the Maricopa College District, um, an art history faculty member who just adopted OER uh, for the first time. I'm going to share his experience. And then we also have somebody from Tacoma College in Washington. Um, same thing, but, uh, but you US history. And so the idea is to hear about some unique uh, experiences that they may have had, um, not just uh, adopting or adapting OER for the first time, but kind of what their motivation was, what impact it had on the students. So um, that sounds pretty good. And then as we said before, the Open Education Week uh, in March there, we've got all those faculty dialogues going on. And then you can see for the rest of the semester, we're, uh, you know, the rest of the spring semester, we're approaching a few other um, a few other angles, I guess, when it comes to the OER thing. And I think, uh, thank you, Quill, it's Pierce College um, in, in, in Washington. So, um, but yeah, so the OER and, and zero textbook cost de degree pathways, and then later on in June, uh, the regional models. So um, looking at it from a few different perspectives there throughout this, and I believe, and Una, correct me if I'm wrong, but we, we do try to pick these uh, these webinar topics in some way um, based on the results of the uh, member survey, correct? Absolutely. Uh, we do that and then um, as we talk with new members, um, we also try to take that into mind because they didn't get a chance to do the survey uh, the previous year and in fact our April one on dual enrollment has come up with a lot of our new members this year where the enrollment for dual enrollment is growing greatly as a percentage of the college's total enrollment. And OER becomes a big issue around the text, a big, um, a wonderful actually solution to the problem of purchasing those textbooks for students, which sometimes falls to the high school, sometimes it, um, the college helps out or the student's family, which often aren't expecting that cost. So um, that particular one came out of a slightly different place, but yes, in general, you're absolutely right, Matthew. We use we look at we look at your input and feedback. All right. Uh, I, I, we wanted to mention the Open Ed Conference as well. This is the um, U.S.-based conference um, that is a, a very important open education conference, which I think many of you have been to, and we always plan a meetup at that event. Um, and it's been announced that it's in Phoenix this year, um, right over, um, right over Halloween. Um, <laughs> and we haven't, uh, we're still waiting for the, um, opening of the proposals. Um, it hasn't yet opened up, which means we still have a little time to think about, uh, what submissions we want to make to that conference. But we hope that, um, many of you, if not all of you can join, uh, us for that one. It's, uh, it'll, it'll be a great conference as always. All right, I want to turn this over to Kiri Dolly, who maintains our amazing list of open education conferences on the website. Kiri? Thanks, Una. So um, we have already heard about several um, open education related conferences um, in this meeting, but I wanted to point out this resource that we maintain on the website where you can find information about those conferences and many others related to open education. We list everything from smaller regional events to international conferences there. And we also include the submission deadlines for proposals um, for each of these events, um, just to help you plan your participation in them. So if you're looking to attend or present at some open education conferences, you'll wanna take a look at the spreadsheet and I'll put the link in the chat window in a minute. Um, and then I also wanted to talk about um, our blog post. So, um, Una, if you would advance. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, we have published five blog posts to the CCC OER website this fall. Um, we've had one from Rachel Dilley of Columbus State Community College, who wrote a guest blog um, post for us on reassigning time for faculty. And we published our annual blog featuring reflections from several different members of our community on the Open Ed Conference last year. We also did a blog post on the community awards from Open Ed. Jubil Dario from Central Virginia Community College wrote a guest blog for us covering the Operation Free Textbook Conference hosted there. 
And most recently, we published a blog sharing insights from Cindy DeMica and Mike Mills on leading change. And our next blog post, which should be posted um, this week, is a recap of the Illinois Community College OER conference. So be on the lookout for that. Um, and I will share the link where you can find all of these blog posts in case you missed any of them in the chat window as well. Great. Great. So much, Carrie. Uh, of course. And um, Carrie, you might need to mute yourself. I think we're getting a little bit of a feedback. Sorry about that. Um, so Kiri actually maintains that conference list, which she just showed you what I actually removed some of the some of the smaller uh, conferences just because I wanted it to fit on a single screen. But um, anything that gets advertised on our list, our community email list, um, Kiri puts it in this. Uh, she updates this uh, Google Sheet essentially with that information. Um, and as she said, she puts in the submissions and she uh, dates uh, so that you know uh, when to get your submission in by and she also puts a link to the uh, to the website so it's really a wonderful wonderful resource and we thank Kiri for that and she also helps us to manage our blog postings which is an opportunity we invite all of you to contribute to our blog and share the great work you're doing um, that it just makes um, it just improves all of us to hear about that great work so thanks to all of you who did participate and once again to Kiri all right let's see uh, we we mentioned this before so i don't i don't know that we need to go back into this but next wednesday we do have this uh great um oer adoption faculty story uh webinar um both uh dr rudy navarro and laura baltz um, are relatively new to oer adoption they've done this in the last couple of semesters so it'll be a fun view of um for those who uh, maybe are still relatively new to OER. What are what are the pitfalls? What are the lessons learned? Uh, what are the things you'd like to tell your college that you need more support on? So I think it's going to be a great webinar next week and hope you can join us for that. All right, Quill, I think this is yours. I like how my role in this meeting is to beg people to get involved. Um, <laughs> So, as I just po posted to the chat window, we love it when our members are involved in our work um, because it makes our entire community of practice stronger. So, um, we would love to have your case studies about how you're doing OER at your institution and what it's doing for your institution. If you have any ideas for blog posts you'd like to see or blog posts you like to write, please let us know that as well. Um, we try, so you saw the conference list, we also try to meet with each other at actual conferences and talk to each other and see each other face to face and be like, oh, you're the person who posted that great thing that I totally use every day. Um, and if you have ideas, you saw our webinars list. Um, for some of those webinars, we are still recruiting speakers. So if you have somebody in mind who you think would be fabulous to hear from or someone at your institution whose work needs to be heard about, let us know so that we can recruit them into one of our webinars. Or if you're one of those folks yourself. Um, and then you've already seen the link to Open Education Week Dialogues, so I won't hit on that so much. Alrighty. Now, um, um, I, Quill, would you like to share your screen and open up that, um, that Google file that everybody filled in? We're just gonna take a quick look at that. And do you want me to do it or do you want Liz to do it? Um, I'm not sure. Who would like to do it? I'm going to stop sharing here. Liz, would you mind doing it? I didn't do the Wordle. <laughs> I just thought we'd, we'd take a quick look at that. Um, at the, I, well, I can do it too. <laughs> Let's see. I can share. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yay. Oh, that's pretty. Okay. Um, so did you want to look at the actual spreadsheet first? Uh, or just the, well, yeah, the spreadsheet's fine. great. Okay. This is great. Yeah. So I, I see that, um, 20, 
24 people participated, even though we have 31 online. So not everyone participated, which is fine. Um, and and um, yeah, show us the Wordle, uh, Liz, if you would. Okay, we saw that just for a minute. Sorry, I have to exit out of full screen here, which it doesn't want to do. <laughs> All right. And as Liz is doing that, we just want to open this up for questions. Um, so you feel welcome to grab the microphone or type in the chat window. This is just a time for you to um, consult with us or the community. Oh, no worries, Alexis. Um, if you, I don't know if I'll, I'll put the, um, I'll put that link back in the, um, in the chat window so that you can fill it in as well. I know people are busy and it's always tough to get here. Okay. Um, Liz, I, I don't think I'm seeing the Wordle. Did you? Oh, here we go. Sorry, I had to get out of full screen. <laughs> no worries. Oh, I love this. So the, the most, I think, Five people say access was the most important word, um, and you know, equity and, and inclusive inclusive was also um, important. Wonderful. I love this. Well, we um, need to work this into our slides uh, for our, our next webinars. That's great. Yeah. All right. Um, we still have a few minutes left, and so want to invite um, anyone who'd like to share more about their work um, to grab the microphone or type in the chat window. Thanks for that, Paige. Yeah, you're right. I was trying to figure out what you were focusing on. So if you're following in the chat, Paige was suggesting that we look at our challenges list for our next set of webinar topics, and that's a really good idea. Excellent. Uh, does anyone want to read those out <laughs> just for fun to, to share them? You mean right now I could read them out loud? Okay. Yeah, go for it. Matthew. So we've got getting more adoptions by faculty, um, learning how to provide print versions of OER textbooks, um, getting faculty to realize that they don't need to develop everything from scratch. That's totally awesome. Um, collecting accurate OER reporting or use data across a system. Accessibility and finding accessible OER content. Reversing a publisher-based culture. Convincing more faculty to adopt. Getting more faculty members to participate in this project. College-wide initiatives for faculty use to use OER finding workforce OER. Uh, we've got system-wide starting OER at a number of institutions, finishing, um, uh, a, uh, achieving the dream OER degree initiative. Again, wanting to get faculty to try. It looks like, you know, faculty adoption is a, is a pretty clear theme that's emerging here. It's always a problem. I mean, that's always an issue. I know that we felt that too. We've got to, you know, you've got to deal with incentive. You know, how do you incentivize it and how do you um, overcome some of the misconceptions that people have? And we, I believe that we did a kind of a Mythbusters thing, didn't we, last year? Mm -hmm. um, yes. So anyway, yeah, it keeps going. We're going to keep adding to this list here. This is like a to-do list. <laughs> yeah, it's a wonderful list. Um, and I hope that, um, you know, I, I know that in general, um, faculty do have a tough time sometimes attending our webinars, depending on the timing. Um, you know, we will publish in advance the ones that are coming up um, in March. Um, and so we really rely on you, on you folks to invite faculty who are in those disciplines to join us, or if they can't join us live, maybe to share the webinars afterwards with them. Because um, we know faculty adoption is a big issue. and I. And what we see over and over again is when faculty um, speak with other faculty in their discipline and they hear what the resources are and how that faculty member has used them and what the students think, it often makes the difference between yes, you know, between no and yes. Um, 
I just was recently working with a couple of students down in San Diego who have been trying to convince their math faculty to move to OER for their introductory math courses. And their math faculty went to a conference where they heard from an, another college in the region from their math faculty who had adopted my open math. And after that conference, the math faculty at their college said, yes, we will do, we, half of them will do it this spring and half of them will do it this fall. So that makes such a huge difference, that connection. A lot of us who are in more of an advisory administration staff position, we can talk till we're blue in the face, but if they hear from another faculty, um, it really helps. Yeah, thanks for sharing all this. Um, Tom mentioned that Florida Virtual Campus has a, a big um, OER summit, February 27th, 28th in Orlando, Florida. So for those of you who are in those colder states, <laughs> great opportunity. Una, this is Nikki. Can I say something real quick to, um, to my fellow um, Blackboard LMS um, people who are on the call? Please. Um, so um, I part of what I'm doing right now is we took an approach uh, a gosh a couple of years ago now um, in trying and I saw one of the challenges and one of the challenges was getting faculty to realize that they don't need to develop everything from scratch um, and I think that was from Paige. So one of the things that we have started doing is developing what we call foundational courses. Um, and it's really, we take um, like the OpenStax text and we create um, a foundation based off of all the, the materials that are available, um, both from OpenStax, but also some external materials. And we create a Blackboard shell or a course shell, so to speak. You could really do this with, um, with non-Blackboard, but I was asking my Blackboard people since um, I can share things with them easily. Um, and we create a foundational course that we give the colleges so that faculty can take that and experiment with it. And so it, it gives them the opportunity to, again, not feel like they're starting from scratch on building, um, building a course because a lot of our faculty, um, they're not course designers. Um, they're, for us in the technical college system, they are, you know, experts in their field of study, um, so to speak, but they may not be um, a trained course designer or instructional designer. Um, so we try to ease the burden of finding OER resources, sort of curating them as a whole and giving the faculty something uh, to make sense of. And then the faculty take that course shell and again, they can decide if they want to keep the discussions, keep the videos, get rid of this or that, and they really can pick it apart. Um, so if there are Blackboard schools on the call who would be interested, we've got almost a dozen shells developed. A lot of them are for Gen Ed, since that was our high enrollment, um, high cost, and we have a very high dual enrollment population at some of our colleges right now. It's approaching or slightly over 50% of their population. Um, so uh, in order to ease that burden, um, we started developing uh, some of these course shells. And they've been really popular because faculty, you know, a lot of them want to experience, you know, and explore OER, but they, you know, don't necessarily have the, the knowledge of building a course from scratch. And so this alleviates that because they can go into a pre-made shell um, and add their assignments, add their, you know, their specific things that they have collected um, as instructors over the years, again, without feeling like they were completely starting um, from scratch, because that's one of the things we found out were the most difficult for uh, a lot of our faculty. They just, one, they don't have the time, you know, we don't have, we, we haven't gotten any grants or anything, so we've really done this um, with just, Um, because I'm not an expert in, in all of these subjects. I just um, develop the courses so that they make sense and they're the most flexible for all 22 of our colleges 
to break it, uh, to kind of break it out. And, and one college, you know, their a faculty member may want to explore a little more in a particular topic or outcome. Um, and so we really build them in a way that's um, that's flexible for each of our colleges because they may they may teach them differently. Um, so Paige, I'm not from a college. I'm with the Technical College System of Georgia. I'm in the system office. Um, but we have 22 colleges, 22 technical colleges around the state um, that we that we manage. Um, so um, it's it's quite the undertaking. But um, but we've had great success over the past couple of years with OER adoptions using this kind of foundational course approach simply because the faculty aren't quite so overwhelmed um, with even just you know thinking about using OER. A lot of them. There's just so many websites out there, and when you say, you know, there's there's OER out there, I mean, I have hundreds of um, resources for all of them, and for them to go and try to look it up, sometimes it can be overwhelming. So I try to lift the burden a little bit, um, and I do a lot of that. Um, I do a lot of that for them. So yeah, Quill, feel free. <laughs> you can, um, I can, I can throw my email address in the chat. Um, but um, but those of you who are interested, I can you know certainly provide you a, a list of the courses that we have, um, along with some kind of basic standards um, because we we have a state standard for all of our courses that all of our colleges use um, as a minimum. This is so great. yeah, um, we can put I'll put my email in here and just shoot me an email if you're if you're interested in getting a copy of the shell. Okay. Yeah, and you know it it looked like we had at least half a dozen people who were interested. Um, so, um, maybe we could arrange a time for Nikki to share this live, um, in sure. the next months, do something informal. Uh, yeah. 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 So thank you, Nikki, for that. That's great. Yeah, you're welcome. And because we know there are a lot of folks who are still on Blackboard. Um, I think many of you also, we've had presentations on the Canvas shells that are in Canvas Commons, which are similar to right. what Nikki has yep. done. But in hers are in Blackboard, and, yep. and actually, one of our speakers on next Wednesday will talk about adopting from the Canvas shell. So it's the same process, but different yep. elements. Yeah. And I think I could probably get a common cartridge export. I just can't. Um, I can't tell you how good that looks when it um, when it uh, when is imported back in. But I can tell you that for the most part, the Blackboard courses um, because. We have we essentially have 22 different environments, or more than that. But but our colleges are all on a different environment, so I can kind of tell you what to look for um, when you take this export and you you import it into another environment. So yeah, great, great. Uh, and so we'll we'll do some checking in with Nikki and with other folks and see if this is something we want to support um, a conversation about um, online um, in the next month or so. Awesome. Sounds good. Great. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. You know, we're just a couple minutes over the hour, and I know everyone is, is super busy. So I think I'm going to, I don't see any other um, questions in here. So we're going to close off for today. And thank you very much. We'll have another meeting either in late March or April, um, another um, one of our um, all members meetings. So thank you all for coming today. Um, and, you know, don't, don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions about anything that went on today. And we're looking forward to seeing you again soon.